here's a closer look at the 3D printed Tech 9 that I did. Actually, it's a KG99, but most people know it as a Tech 9. Um, I'm meaning to do an update video, been too busy. So I'm doing this in the bunk of my semi. So sorry, <laughs> the video quality isn't that great. So yeah, I, uh, I've got a sling on it right now. I like to have a sling on everything. Just nice to carry that way. Um, so these mag pouches I found, they're actually for uh, M4 mags or AR mags. They work really great to hold two 30 round Glock mags. Uh, <clears throat> I'm still not quite done with it. There's stuff I need to do. I don't have a spring on my mag catch, so my mag likes to pop out occasionally. You've got to hold that down. But other than that, uh, I'll take it apart for you. I won't do it on video because I don't have a tripod. So here it is, stripped down. This is the 3D printed part, and the part that's the receiver. There's the trigger group in it, and the the injector. You can see when the trigger is pulled, it just pulls down that sear. And then when the bolt moves, oh, it's hard to show in video, it hits this piece, which resets this piece. So when it's fired, it goes like that. And you gotta go let off the trigger before you can pull it again. Um, so that's the semi auto. Uh, they would call that the uh, disconnector. Pretty sure. Um, so it's still kind of really crude looking inside in some areas. Um, but yeah, that's. These are all the original Tech Tech 9 or Intertech parts. Uh, the ejector here was modified so that it fits in the mag well. Actually, I'm missing the pin for it. It's got this pin through it, but this pin, I don't know what happened to it. And when I went to put it all together, the pin wasn't there. It works just fine. Um, you can see in the the mag well there where it goes it doesn't move around at all um, right there is I'm missing the spring for the, uh, the mag catch um, I had to cut out that part on the, the mag catch this is a 3d printed mag catch I printed it rather low resolution so it's the bigger nozzle, but it worked. It does the job. I just need to make a spring for it and put that in there. It's hard to all do this one-handed because I'm holding the, the phone in my other hand. So once it's once it's all done. Oh come on! This should shouldn't be so difficult to put back in. But actually it helps if you take a mag, I got an empty mag here, if you take the magazine and <coughs> slip the magazine in, so you can see where the catch is supposed to grab it, and then you just drop the catch in. And it holds the magazine pretty well in place. Now you can see here where the uh, ejector is just behind the mag, what, the mag. So once this is working properly, you'd hit this and it would automatically come back out. Or in, I guess. But it works as long as you don't bump it. You push it in firmly when you're shooting and as long as you don't bump it while you're shooting. But if you hold the mag, if you hold it by the mag well, you just got to make sure you hold it a little low so that you don't hit that. Um, but 
I'll put a spring in there next time I get time to go to my shop. Um, this is the the bolt assembly, the striker assembly is in here. This is what the piece, the sear here, it holds this back. And that's your firing pin. You can see it come out there. Um, <clears throat> so it holds that back when you fire it, it drops that. Um, it's nice that it's all held together. So it's all one one assembly here. <clears throat> this is the uh, extractor. It grabs the shell casing. Um, <clears throat> with Tech 9's a big problem is this extractor piece isn't set at the right level. It's, it's just a spring and the end of it is shaped. Let's see if I can get that in focus. And it's held in place by an Allen screw here. So what you do is you get yourself an empty shell casing. You stick it in there and you loosen up this this set screw. And you can you can set that right at the right level to grab the rim of your shell. And that usually clears up all your uh, extraction problems. Um, I've done it to other ones in the past that haven't extracted properly and it's always cured the problem. So the biggest thing with Tech 9's is uh, the magazines were kind of finicky. Uh, if you were held them by the magazine while shooting they wouldn't feed right and if that wasn't adjusted properly or got out of adjustment it wouldn't extract right and you'd have a jam o -matic. So they gave them a bad name. Um, <clears throat> so this is the upper receiver. So this is the part um, you can usually get these as a kit um, here's the back piece I made this piece on my lathe this is actually a <laughs> I made it out of a bolt head uh, and rounded it and uh, hollowed it out here and then welded a bolt into it my welding is not the greatest but it holds together then I machined the back of it some this is what holds in back here and holds it to the frame so it sits in there this front piece is held on by this pin in this hole um, usually the back piece is threaded in on a Tech 9 but on the early KG 99's they just had a piece that slipped in here um, so there's no threads on the back of the receiver, which I thought I'd I'd never mess with the KG99. I'd messed with Tech Nines before, so I thought this threads were stripped out because you can kind of see where it's worn here, where the piece was. Um, so what I did is I took this piece that I made and I drilled it and I tapped it, and I drilled the receiver to match the holes match. I wanted a do four screws originally so I started with the top and bottom hole and I didn't like the screw sticking up by my sights so I couldn't see my sights so I just did three and did them offset and a Y that works pretty good I don't like it because you have to use a tool to take it apart because you can't get this out so what I plan to do in the future is <clears throat> take where these screw holes are and I'm going to cut a slot that comes down, so the slot will come down and over, so I'll be able to stick it in and rotate it, and then it'll sit in its spot. And it'll be held in by, by the spring here, so, it, and then, of course, by the front pin pushing it back here, so it'll be alright. <clears throat> um, so that'll make it easier to take apart in the future. Um, so the Tech 9's had a problem with the back of the frames here. They break off and crack. Um, part of that is from the way the end cap went on, especially on the early, the KG99's. They used anything more than a uh, 110 grain or 115 grain standard 9mm. It would blow that back cap off through, through the frame. 
And that's what happened in the case that I got. I don't have my old frame with me, but yeah, it uh, it just blew the back end off when I I got it that way. The guy was like, "Yeah, it's just a wall hanger. Yeah, I got it just to hang up." And I decided uh, I didn't want to hang it up on my wall anymore. And so I bought it cheap because he couldn't do anything with it. And print it up a lower. It takes the Glock mags. <clears throat> Glock mags are a lot cheaper than original Tech mags. That's for sure. Um, it's all pretty simple. It's a lot of fun. It's fun to shoot. Um, uh, it's accurate enough. A lot of fun to shoot. But it goes back together. Let's see if I can do it on camera here, or mostly on camera. So the bolt assembly. <clears throat> Just drop it in. Like so. Uh, bring it around. Let's see. Got to line up. This hole with that. And take your charging handle. And you can see there's a little spring in there. <clears throat> and that grabs in this groove on the charging handle. safety on these when the firing pin is back then <clears throat> this gets pushed in oh I can't do it one handed um, I'll put it back together and show you that okay I got it back together <clears throat> so yeah here's the safety when it's when it's out like that and it's ready to fire, push it in and it's safe. And you can pull the trigger and nothing happens because this physically blocks the firing pin from going forwards. So you can pull that out and then make sure there's nothing in it. There, of course, there isn't. I always like to visually check the actual chamber. There's nothing in there. So then, you know, of course, you can pull the trigger, and then once you pull the trigger, you can't you can't push that in. You have to recock it. Oh, let's see if I can grab the phone somehow. It'd be really nice to have a tripod, which I don't have. <clears throat> so. That's safety on, safety off, so on, you can pull the trigger, nothing happens. You can hear a little click in there, but it, it uh, doesn't actually move anything inside of it. And then there's where the firing pin goes, so. <clears throat> so that's safety on. It's pretty convenient. You can look real easy and tell that you got the safety in um, or safety off. It sticks out more. And with the safety on, you can't pull the bolt back. And there's a little uh, groove in there that doesn't allow you to, to move it. It's a little awkward because you can't just push something with your thumb or your finger, but I like it because it's a physical, it physically blocks the firing pin. So even if you do pull the trigger, it won't fire. Um, and it stays in there pretty good. It's got that spring in there that I showed you earlier that holds it in place, gives it some tension. 
But yeah, that's the 3D printed Tech 9. Um, I need to do some shooting with it. I've only got about 100, 150 rounds through it. And of course, with uh, not being able to find ammo, kind of sucks. I've got I've got some ammo, but I don't want to shoot it all up. didn't normally shoot a lot of 9mm so I didn't have a whole lot on hand. Um, my Glock that I normally shoot um, is 40 caliber so that's what I had on hand. And <laughs> I did find out though that the, uh, the 40 caliber Glock mags do not work. You get double feeds when you try to run it with 9mm in here. Now, when I use the conversion barrel on my Glock to 9mm, the 40 caliber Glock mags work just fine. They just don't run in the Tech 9. So, that's that. But I got these anyways, the 9mm 30 round mags for my Glock. So it's nice to be able to run this with the same mags that I already had. Um, so I plan... On once I get some time in the shop to try to build some uppers and bolt assemblies from scratch um, pretty much similar to this so that they'll work on these 3D printed lowers uh, it's in the works I've got some of the material for it uh, I need to buy some uh, round stock to uh, to make my bolts out of and uh, some more round stock for firing pins and other various things. Um, I won't do the same type of end cap like this where you have to screw it in. It'll be a push and twist. Um, the barrel on this is threaded, but these are a, I think it's a three quarter by 16 or something like that. I could be wrong. They're the same as a Mac 11. Um, so it's a really odd size on these. When I make when I make my uppers, my copied uppers, I'm gonna do the barrels uh, with one half by 28 thread, so you can find common muzzle attachments for it. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna these barrels. You can see right here the weld they're welded into the uppers I don't like that um, I like to be able to pull the barrels out so when I make my barrels I was thinking of using actually uh, five and a half inch AR-15 barrels so they can be changed out to rifle length barrels if you want to put a stock on it uh, they do have in the Foscat I think it's the Foscad pack <clears throat> they have an attachment that goes on the back of this where these holes are that line up so you can put some screws in there and you can attach a stock to it or an arm brace um, I've been working on an arm brace design for this um, but I haven't yet <clears throat> finished it out this is what I've been working on uh, this is just the tail hook brace uh, and I've got two holes in it that I want to do. Uh, I gotta make it a little bit bigger. My measurements were off when I drew it up in CAD, uh, so I gotta make this piece uh, wider. And <clears throat> I've got a matching piece that goes on the back, so I want to do a collapsible so it'll come out, and come in. Um, I, I call it the poor man's MP5. I mean, who doesn't like an MP5 and the collapsible tail hook? I like the tail hook brace because you can actually use it like a brace. It's really easy to stick your arm in there, and it actually supports your arm quite well. Um, used on an AR-15 pistol, um, so if you're shooting an AR one-handed with the tail hook style brace, it's really nice. That's why I like them. Um, 
so um, I want to do that with this. Uh, technically you're not supposed to shoulder a brace, but we all know we do. <laughs> um, but it's designed to actually be a brace, so that's why I went with the tail hook rather than like the SP Tactical style. But that's that's in the future works for this, and uh, once I have some more time to shoot, I'll be updating another video with some shooting. A friend of mine has a 3D printed uh, Mac 11. The, the, they call it the Mac Daddy. Um, that takes the Glock mags as well. Um, side by side, they look. <laughs> They look almost identical. They're about the same size, the layout, the way they work. Um, so I want to do a comparison video with that too once I can get some time and get him out. Maybe we can go to my range and uh, do some shooting, compare them. Um, I have shot his. It's pretty nice. A lot like this one. Um, they shoot really nice. Uh, this is just a lot of fun to shoot. Um, few of my buddies and cousins have shot it. They all like it. Uh, if, uh, if you're in the market for one, I highly recommend uh, buying an upper. I've seen the uppers on Gunbroker and on eBay. Uh, I'm not sure if they're still on eBay. eBay's done a lot of changes with what they're allowing and stuff. Um, but there, you can get these uppers between two, 200 to 400. That's, I think 400 is really steep. Um, I got mine really cheap because the guy just was, oh, it's broken, can't do anything with it. <clears throat> um, but, yeah, it's a lot of fun to shoot. I haven't had any problems with it other than my mag catch. That's my biggest issue is I don't have a spring in it. Otherwise, it works just fine. Uh, any questions, ask me some questions and uh, my next update video, I'll answer your all your questions as best I can um, so yeah uh, build one and uh, upload a video they're fun <laughs>